Okay, uh, ladies and jelly beans. Um, we are going today to be looking at um, uh, the frames and the conceptual framework. We did this in the last lesson. Um, this all sounds very complex. If you were here the last lesson, you'll know it's not really that complex. But today we're going to be looking at the frames, okay? And the frames are part of the syllabus, and it's just <clears throat> the way to look at the frames is just looking at um, a photograph or a film, if you're looking at photography and digital media, um, from a different perspective, um, from a different point of view. So it's basically each frame is going to ask different questions of the artwork that you're looking at. So we're going to quickly um, do a, a frame analysis of an artwork and then I'm going to send you um, in your discussion um, or in this discussion to a, um, a page on the module, Shapes and Shadows, and you're going to analyse a photograph by Max Dupain using the frames. Now, um, for all you people that um, might go on to study art, um, all of these ideas, uh, the frames, conceptual framework, all that sort of stuff, is uh, part of the art syllabus as well. But it's also a really good way to unpackage any object or any um, artwork that's in front of you. So these skills could be transferable to other subjects, like um, for in in English, for instance. So it's a really good thing to know and know how to do. So um, on, your, um, on your actual um, ex exchange page, you've got in the, um, in the Shapes and Shadows module, um, you've got a page called the Conceptual Framework and the Frames. Um, the people that did that lesson with me will know where that is, but if you don't know where it is, like I said, it's on the top of the, um, the module, Shapes and Shadows, for term two. So we'll click on that. And um, you've got, if, if you weren't here for the lesson, there is a, um, at the top we have the conceptual framework, which we're not going to look at today. Today we're going to look at the frames. You've got a description of what the frames are. There's four of them. And um, you've also got a document um, on this page as well that tells you what each frame is. So we'll enlarge that document. We'll just have a quick look at um, that particular document. So when you're looking at an artwork, you can look at it from a number of perspectives. Okay, so um, the one that we usually um, go to is our first port of call if we're looking at a, an artwork is our subjective frame. And the subjective frame is just basically largely about um, your impressions of how an artwork makes you feel. So if this, uh, if this isn't clear uh, in this video, like I said, you know where to find it on um, Exchange and you can go have a look at it. But um, subjective frame is um, going to ask the questions that are in this document. Okay, so what's my first impression? Um, what do I see, hear and feel? What is the emotional impact? What do I recall or remember? Sometimes a, an image is going to make us remember a particular thing that's happened in our lives. Maybe it's an emotional thing, maybe it's a trip overseas. Could remind you of a lot of things. Um, using your intuition, what do you think the artist was thinking about or what is the artist about? Um, so you're describing using your senses. How does the artwork stir your imagination? How can you personally re relate to it? What is it about? And why was it made? What was the, the reason for making it? So that's your subjective frame. Um, we won't be looking at the postmodern frame. That's something that senior students normally um, engage with. It's a little bit uh, complex. This uh, year nine course. Um, structural frame. The structural frame, like the name sort of tells you, is subjective is about your subjective feelings. Structural is about how the artwork is made. So in the case of a photograph by Max Dupain, you would say if um, what, what medium it was. So it's two-dimensional. Um, it is uh, probably a sil silver gelatin print or black and white photograph. Um, you would talk about things like the visual language is used in it. So if it was a drawing, you'd talk about line. Um, if it was a colour painting, you'd talk about colour and brushworks. But in the case of a photograph, um, especially st what they call modernist photography, which is what we're talking about when we're looking at um, Max Dupain, um, we've, we've talked about in our last lesson the, um, the attributes of modernism. Okay, So it's bold, um, boldness of lines quite often, boldness of um, tones and geometric features. Um, they would tend to like take pictures of everyday life rather than the more traditional things that would be used for a, a subject matter of um, pictorialism. And we remember that pictorialism was kind of like aping or mimicking um, traditional painting and art of the time. So 
Modernism is a challenge. It's challenging the tradition. Okay, so um, for our structural frame, you talk about um, the boldness of contrast, most likely if there's um, dark shadows and, 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 and quite bright highlights. You talk about whether it's a close-up or a further away view. Um, you talk about the subject matter, um, what's, what's actually being um, displayed. Um, signs and symbols is something that people often forget to talk about in the structural frame. So the structural frame is about how it's put together, but also the signs and symbols that might be embedded in the artwork. We're going to, we'll, we'll be out looking at an artwork and seeing that. Sometimes a sign and symbol is something really obvious. Um, you know, we know that, um, I'll just grab a whiteboard marker. We know that, you know, if I was to do that on the board, um, you know, being as we are at a Christian and Catholic school, um, we straight away um, know that, you know, a cross is a sign or a symbol for, for Christ and for the Christian religion, okay? Um, you know, you might have, any time you've got a red circle with a, a slash through it, you know that means don't do whatever's inside the circle. Okay, so they're obvious symbols, but if we had a symbol of, say, um, someone at the beach, okay, fit and strong and sun um, and suntanned, you might see that as a symbol of um, the outdoor life that uh, Australians um, are enamoured with. Okay, and we saw that recently with all these people going to the beach, even though they weren't supposed to be there. So people really love um, that outdoor lifestyle um, and sport and being active in Australia and something that um, is an integral part of our identity. So, um, symbols and signs are in the structural frame. Okay, so if you're not sure about the types of questions or viewpoint that each frame is going to be looking at a particular um, photograph with, you have this document. Okay, it is on exchange. It's the first part of exchange. So you can look at these um, questions that, that each frame asks so that you examine um, the photograph from a different viewpoint. Okay, so that is what that is all about. And then the cultural frame. Now, for a lot of Dupain's work, and we'll see this when we analyse the artwork for this lesson, the cultural frame, okay? What culture, group, race, place, identity is represented? So Max Dupain's work um, was very much about the Australia of the early 1900s, okay? So we have um, a lot of beach scenes in, in, in his work, and a lot of city scenes as well, the hustle and bustle of Sydney at the time. Um, pre-war, or pre-World War II. Um, so, um, for his beach scenes, you've got straight away that, that notion of um, how um, Australians love that idea of the bronzed Aussie, the tall, bronzed, fit Aussie, okay, surf, life-saving, all those sorts of ideas. Um, what I ideology is revealed? Um, we do know that, um, you know, in that time, um, prior to uh, World War II, Australia was quite a homo homogenous society. It was very Anglo-Saxon. Um, Australia's changed a lot, become very multicultural since that time. So that's something to think about, the, the actual culture um, that's represented. Um, also, you know, what does it show us about the culture? Once again, um, love of the outdoors, fitness, all that sort of stuff. Which particular aspects of the time and place of the culture are referred to in the artwork? So that's talking about the actual time the artwork is made, okay? And does it support this culture or react against it? Is it a celebration of the culture? And most of Max Dupain's artworks to do with the beach and the Australian lifestyle are a celebration. They're not a criticism. Um, later on, some artists um, took some of those ideas about the bronzed Aussie and whatnot, and um, especially artists that are more contemporary have kind of, um, they weren't, they're not mocking it, but certainly questioning it um, and the ideas around it. So. Um, this document, like I said, is just going to tell you the questions that each frame is asking of an artwork. So, let's have a quick look um, at um, an artwork by Max Dupain. It is an iconic um, artwork, and it's called The Sun Baker. And, um, you know, this artwork's taken in the mid-1900s, um, mid to early 1900s. We have this figure of a person that's just um, left the, uh, up the beach, left the water. He's run up on the beach and he's flopped down on the sand. You can tell by the strong highlights and the strong shadows in the picture that um, this person is um, 
out on a really sunny day, uh, which is what you'd normally be doing if you're sunbaking. So from a subjective point of view, you might say that uh, this reminds you of uh, your times when you've gone to the beach and enjoyed a, a family holiday uh, and you've sunbaked. Um, it also might remind you um, of times that you've done this activity, you sunbaked, okay? Um, from the cultural point of view, if you're looking at from the cultural frame, obviously that idea of the, the bronzed Aussie, okay, strong and fit, okay? You might mention the fact that this individual looks like, more, more than likely, that it's quite hard to tell from this angle, but um, you can assume that he'd be um, of uh, Anglo-Saxon stock or he, um, white Australian. Uh, and also, um, from the structural frame point of view, it's a black and white photograph, okay? From a modernist point of view, it's straight, what they call straight photography, okay? So pictorialism was changing his image. They would smear Vaseline on lenses to create a soft focus. They wouldn't normally come in so close to a subject matter for a portrait. This is a very unusual angle. We've got down low at um, eye level, but really down low uh, at a viewpoint that's quite low. And looking up, it makes this um, person look monumental, okay, in, in stature. You know, when I look at this image, what am I reminded of if I'm going back into the subjective frame? Um, I am reminded of Ayers Rock, okay, because this figure is, is very large and monumental compared to the, everything that's around him. So um, you can say that the low, um, low, low viewpoint looking up at this figure and the close-up, extreme close-up, makes this person look monumental and powerful. Okay, so it's saying a lot about the, um, once again in the cultural frame, that idea of the strong and, and vital male um, persona that um, was believed in at the time. So you can see that each frame that you that you is asking a question is going to ask it from a different viewpoint. Okay, so. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a Max Dupain image and to begin with, rather than getting you to go and find the questions that each frame asks, I'm going to actually scaffold it and ask you particular questions within each frame. Later on, you might be given an image like this and you'll be expected to go to that um, frame sheet and look at the types of things that you need to be looking for, the types of questions you need to be asking of each particular artwork um, and answering those questions yourselves. Because Sometimes a frame question is very relevant for a particular artwork and sometimes it's not. Like if you were looking at the structural frame for this artwork and you said, well, what are the colours? It's not really relevant, is it? Because it's a black and white photograph. If you were asking about the lines, okay, um, if it had, um, you could say that the lines are organic because it's about a human body. So you could discuss lines in this case, the outlines of the object. Um, but any questions that are not relevant, you're not going to ask them. Um, so, for instance, if you're talking from the cultural frame point, um, do we need to discuss religion, for instance? Probably not. Do we need to discuss race? Yes, at this particular time in Australia's history, like I said, um, we had this idea of um, quite often uh, women were just starting to um, be allowed to, to go out and bathe in the open. Um, prior to that, it wasn't a common thing. Um, it's certainly uh, a more male-dominated society than perhaps um, well, definitely more do do male dominated than the, than the current times. Um, you know, the idea of um, women's liberation and whatnot, uh, we've come a long way. So women would have been at home, there would have been less women in the work workforce, um, because this, um, this image is taken in times of the past. So um, you're in a position now um, where I will scaffold the worksheet that you're going to be looking at today but um, later on, you're going to be expected to go and look at those frame questions and analyse artworks and write about them from each particular perspective using those questions that the frames ask. And eventually, um, hopefully, you'll have an idea of what sort of questions you need to ask for each frame. You don't need to remember each question perfectly. As long as you know that subjective is about um, how it makes you feel, past experience, how the artist might have felt, as long as you know with the structural frame that it's about the elements of the photography, the lighting, the camera angle, um, what type of um, photograph it is, is it black and white, is it colour, and signs and symbols, okay? 
cultural, race, place, identity, all those sorts of ideas. Okay, so eventually you'll understand the questions that are asked of each frame. Anyway, I have rabbited on for long enough um, about Max Dupain, the Sunbaker. I will now um, get you guys to um, do the uh, exercise that will, you will find on the exchange page. And you will find it on the exchange page um, where it says uh, Max Dupain frame analysis. Okay? And mo more than likely, if I can manage to get exchange to do it for me, I will put a link to that page on this discussion page. Um, to make life really easy for you. So download the Word document, answer the questions, and when you've finished, please upload your completed work um, to Exchange so I can have a look at it and make sure that um, we're answering the questions correctly and with enough detail. Anyway, see you on the other side.